In lesson two, we are going to continue using a compass and a straight edge, and we're going to be constructing patterns. So some different things in this um, lesson. So if you were in class, um, the activity 2.1 is a math talk. So we would you would be um, quietly thinking about your answer. So looking at your student workbook on page 13, it gives you two circles with centers A and B. And you should be thinking about how you know the four different statements that are written there. So looking at this diagram, and on here I've put some different colors on here, you should be looking at, based on this diagram, how can you determine the four statements that are written there. Some different vocabulary that you could use is here in green that we talked about in lesson one, congruent, radius or radii, center, intersection, diameter, trying to get that math language in there. Um, and you could use some different sentences. First, I know this because of, or I notice this, so I yada, yada, yada. So the four statements are here. So you should think about this before listening to my explanation. Try to write yourself some, some answers or talk through it with somebody. Um, but how do we know that the length of EA is congruent to the length of EB? So let me just highlight those on here quick. So how do we know that EA is congruent to EB is the question. So hopefully you determined um, and said something about that EA and EB are both radii of these circles. And we know that these two circles are congruent because they go through each other's center. Okay, so this red circle is centered around A with radius AB. This blue circle is centered around B with radius AB as well. So they're radii in two congruent circles, so they are equal. So hopefully I had something like that. And I'm just gonna type this out here. Okay, so radi they both are radii of congruent. Remember, congruent means equal circles. So then next one, how do we know that ABF is equilateral? So how do we know that triangle ABF is equilateral? So ABF, triangle ABF, how do we know that's an equilateral triangle? And so again, this is a similar, this is a similar um, justification because now we know that all, all or each of the sides of the triangle are radii. So they have to be equal or congruent. How do we know that AB, this little segment in here, is one third of CD? Well, if AC is a radius of this red circle, AB is a radius of this red circle, BD is a radius of the blue circle, all these radii are equal. These little things are called tick marks, and they just show that something is congruent. Okay, so if you see a little tick on it, it's just telling you that all of those segments are equal. So since AC, AB, and BD are all the same, AB is one out of three parts. Okay, so AB is one third of CD because it is one out of three parts. And each of those parts are equal. How do we know that CB so let me erase a little bit of this so we can kind of see. So how do we know that CB is congruent to DA? So that would be because they're both diameters. 
Okay, so both of those are diameters. So if you said something like that, both diameters of congruent circles. And remember, congruent meaning equal. All right, so then um, in this lesson, we were supposed to make our own pattern and give detailed, precise statements, okay, to identify what we were doing. So just kind of trying to get you into the mindset of what is vague and what is precise. So this statement right here says, start with a line and two points. Okay, pretty vague. You could end up drawing a line here. Your two points could be here and here. You could have drawn a line here and drawn both of your points on the line. Okay, but many different ways to do this statement. Start with a line, draw two points. This detailed instruction says start with a line L, point A on line L, and point B not on line L. And what we're doing here is I actually skipped over to the lesson summary. So I'm grabbing these statements from page 16. So I'm grabbing these statements from the summary on page 16. The vague statement is in the left-hand column and the detailed statement is in the right-hand column. So this says, start with a line L. Okay, so that's telling you draw a line and then you're gonna label the line L. So I'm just gonna draw a line and then I'm gonna label it L. Then it says, draw point A on the line and draw point B not on the line. Okay, so now we know where they wanted the points relative to the line. So then the next, um, the next statement says, create a line. Okay, vague, just create a line. Detailed, create a line through AB. So now it wants you to do a line through AB. Remember, a line is an extension. So lay your straight edge on there, okay, and draw a line that goes through A and B, so touches them. Label this line P. Okay, next direction. And this is just in your workbook, okay? So this is on page 16. So let me paste this on here. So now we're just gonna follow along the rest of the directions on page 16. So what I'm gonna do is just get these instructions here. So here are the instructions as they're written in your student workbook. Okay, and again, that's on page 16. And then here's the instructions that we've followed so far. So we've done number one and number two. Now it says create a circle, so that's with your compass. So we want to create a circle that is centered at A and has a radius AB. So remember, center means put the metal point there. Radius means open your circle to that length. Okay, and then we're going to draw a circle. And then it says label, um, this circle intersects line L. So line L is this one. So the red circle's intersecting that line in two places. Label the one to the right of A, so to the right of A, label that point C. Step four says create a circle centered at B, so move your point to B. Still wants a radius of BA, okay? So still wants that same radius length that we just used. So draw another circle. This circle intersects line P at A and another point. So here's line P. This green circle is intersecting it at two points. 
one of the points is already labeled A, label the other point D. Now create a circle centered at D, okay, so centered at D with a radius of BC. So we need to open this compass to a length of BC, so we need to set it on B and C. And now we need to do a circle around D. So move this to D and draw a circle around D. Then it says this circle, so the purple one, intersects circle B, okay? And circle B is the green circle. So intersects the circle centered at B in two places. Label the intersection to the right of B Okay, so to the right of B, label that as E. Now create a line. Create a line through B and E. Okay, so here's B, here's E. So create a line that extends through those. And remember, line extends forever. So not just the segment connecting B and E, but a line. So lay your straight edge down, draw a line. And so what actually just happened here is you created parallel lines. And this will actually be on your cool down quiz, okay, over this lesson. So lesson um, Two, we'll have a cool down and it will be essentially following these exact directions. So some of the vocab that we just saw in here, okay, is parallel lines as well as parallel segments. So parallel lines, remember, are two lines that are never going to touch each other, okay? They're never going to intersect. They are going at exactly the same slope. When we mark parallel lines on a diagram, we use these little arrows. So this is to say that those two, two lines are parallel. You can also have parallel segments where if you extended them, the lines would be parallel, but we just see the segments with no arrows on the end. Okay, again, to claim to show that they're parallel, these little arrows. If you have two sets within the same picture, then you could put two on here to show that these two are parallel to each other these two are parallel to each other.